Hi there. Time for another abandoned railway tunnel explore, I thought. Today, we're going to have a look at what is known as the Spink Hill Tunnel. It's not far from Sheffield and Chesterfield. Everywhere is very wet and muddy. This track bed here is quite flooded and I've had to wade through quite a bit of water to get here. This is actually what was the Lancashire and East Co Lancashire and Derby East Coast Railway Line. Later the Grand Central and eventually became part of LNER. The portal which is the northern portal, is just ahead up there. So I'm going to make my way down and we'll, we'll see what we see as we, we walk along the track bed. We've got quite a lot of debris left over from the railway over here there's all the timber from the perimeter fence i think these are the old central drainage tunnel and you probably can't see them but with a uh, couple of sections of a railway line over here that's the northern portal down there we'll head towards that I'll just give you a closer look at all this debris it's as if it's just been piled up and abandoned. That's uh, two sections of rail line. First time I've ever seen anything like that left on site. You'd have thought they'd have scrapped it. You can just make out the portal in the distance. Now one disappointing thing about this tunnel is there's no security fence. So I've nothing to climb over. You basically just walk in. Where is the fun in that? This needed a 12 foot steel and barbed wire security fence. And then I'd have had the fun of climbing over it. But not in this case. We just casually walk in. Now this tunnel was opened 21st of September 1898. The tunnel is 501 yards long. It runs straight for about 400 yards and then the last 100 yards it bears to the right. That's why you can't see the light at the other end of the tunnel. If you head that way you'll end up in Sheffield and if you go through the tunnel and that direction you're going to end up in Chesterfield or Lincoln. There's not a lot left in the tunnel, it has all been cleared out. But there's some nice brickwork to look at and in a certain area there's uh, quite a bit of uh, ferrous oxide deposits on the wall. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to look at. Now the tunnel did close and it was on the 9th of January 1967. 
so we'll we'll make our way into the tunnel this end of the tunnel looks pretty flooded so we're gonna have to wade through some more water to get in Didn't expect it to be as flooded as this. I've only got my wetties on. It came probably to within an inch of the top. I only just managed to get in. I looked at it earlier in the year and no way it was for this amount of water. You could just walk in. But I'm in, so we'll head off into the tunnel. Now one of the most difficult photographs I take is looking straight out of a portal from inside a tunnel. No matter what you do, it always overexposes the portal light and then the brickwork inside is pitch black. So I decided the only way around it was to use filling flash to try and illuminate all this brickwork. But a little electronic flash wasted time. So I've got my homemade 1950 style flash gun. I think I use this in Megatron and a few other videos. It's got a Graflex reflector, which I bought about 15 quid. And then I've just made up an aluminium mount, nine volt battery, and a, an Edison screw light bulb holder uh, and a switch to trigger the flash bulb off with. The problem is the flash bulbs. They're made literally specially. They're about £10 each. So I've just brought three with me today. Use at the outlets, see how, see how they work out. For the camera, basically put it on a 5 cent exposure. I've got to use about an F8 so that in that five seconds I don't overexpose the outlet. Anyway, I'm going to put a five second delay on and just fire this off in uh, when the shutter's open. We'll see how it works out. Shutter's open. So that's it, hopefully it's worked out. I'm gonna, I'll probably do another one down here, perhaps a silhouette style, and I'll save a bull for the far end. And then we'll have a look after that. We'll see how they work out. This is a photo taken with the homemade flash gun. You can actually see the brickwork and you're not blinded by an overexposed portal. There's some nice ferrous oxide, oxide deposits on the left as well. Quite a nice photo that. And this picture, that's a closer view of those beautiful reflections of the portal on the water at the entrance. I love taking silhouettes in tunnels. For this photograph, I basically held my homemade flash gun in front of me. I'd got the camera on a 10 second delay so I could get in position and a 5 second exposure. So once I knew the shutter was open, I fired the, the flash off. It immediately freezes me and gives a, a nice clear silhouette.
As I've probably mentioned before, on these railway tunnel explorers, the video is okay, even though I've got some good lighting now. It's okay, but it doesn't really show up the beauty of these places. So I will be mixing some video, some light painted still shots, and probably some uh, flash photography as well. So we'll, we'll make our way further in and see what we can find. We're about 50 metres in the tunnel now. This light painted shot shows you about 400 yards of straight tunnel just before it curves to the right. You can just see the light from the southern portal in the distance. Walls are quite sooty but generally okay. Another light painted shot. We're looking the other way now, back about 50 yards where we entered the tunnel. By doing light painting, you've got your shutter open a long time and you can't get around that overexposed portal. Now I don't know if you can read that, but I, I can remember the skinheads, probably in the 1970s I think. I take it somebody around here must not have liked them much. Now this was the only railway relic I really found in the tunnel, a very rusty I'm assuming it's some form of rail clamp. Probably a original looking at the state of it. So 1898, 120 years old. Looking forward again with signs of ferrous oxide deposits on the walls. quite a lot in this one picture. We've got one of the refuges behind me. These are evenly spaced down the tunnel walls to provide a refuge for the uh, railway worker. And as you can see here, we've got some nice, um, well you could say the ferrous oxide sort of mud deposits. You get ferrous oxide, uh, which is iron, in, in the, the soil. It's quite often released when there's been mine workings in the area. So it's like rusty water and mud. It's leaking through, and then it leaves these deposits on the wall, which are quite solid. They're, they're actually like, a bit like a marble. Uh, very orange and dirty as well. Well, they, they do provide some fantastic photo opportunities. So I will have a go at photographing these. They tend to work good with flash because it, it reflects off the shiny surface. But uh, yeah, they do look nice. I fired an electronic flash to get that silhouette. There's some nice orange-brown colours in that ferrous oxide. Probably better known as rust.
got another sort of ferrous oxide deposit. This time it's, it's mud. There's a, a hole in the wall there where the brick's missing. I can see the water and the mud sort of flowing out now, leaving this big deposit here. Yeah, you can actually see the water running all the time. I suppose over the years it, it's built up. Onward. Like I said, there's, there's not a lot in the tunnel. Everything has been cleared out. But that's looking back to the northern portal, about 300 yards away. And that again, that's looking to the southern portal. You can see it's very bare, there's nothing there at all. That's where all the water's leaking from. You can probably hear it dripping. There's some nice orange brown colours in that ferrous oxide. We're just approaching the bend and the southern portal. It's probably the view the train driver would get as he was leaving the tunnel. So this was my last flash bulb. It gave a nice silhouette, me peering through the fence. Luckily, there were no cattle in it today. Just get through this fence.
through. Right, and through. Not the best area, this. I reckon there must be about two foot of, um, well, it's straw, and, well, the other one is mud. I'm going to make your way through it and uh, head up to the southern portal. I can see the light clearly from here. We're just approaching the southern portal now. Not too sure what I'm walking through, but it's very soft and very sludgy. So, back in the daylight again, as you can see, this southern portal is very similar to the northern portal. It is extremely muddy round here. I keep sinking into whatever this is. So, there's not a lot to see here, it's very similar to the other end. I'm going to make my way back through the tunnel to the northern portal and then we'll try and have a route uh, have a look at the route of this tunnel from a, a different angle I'll see you down at the other end So we're back at the, the northern portal. Luckily, there were plenty of water in there to clean my boots. Now, like I said, I want to try and show you the route that the tunnel takes from above ground. Quite often in the past, I've walked the route and sort of identified any ventilation shafts. With this one, well, I'll show you this my new little toy. I've used this on the odd camping video but I've never used it on an exploration video. It's a, it's a little drone, it's a DJ Maverick Air. Unbelievably clever. This can do things I never even dreamt of. I'll just show you it briefly. So that, that, that's it, the four rotor arms open up. It's very compact packed and the, it's 4K footage. It's unbelievable it is. So like I say, the plan is we're gonna climb up, up the embankment, onto the fields above the tunnel and then we'll fly the drone and hopefully looking down, I'd like to think we could see both cuttings and then you can see the route the tunnel takes across the fields. It would have been nice to fly this in the tunnel but uh, it does need GPS and a few other things so I don't think it would work in there. So that goes back in its carrying case and I'll uh, I'll see you on top of the tunnel.
we're in the fields on top of the railway tunnel at the moment the sun is very low in the sky so it is going to make filming a bit of a bit awkward i'd say i've just come behind this hedge so i ain't got the bright sunshine in my face so we'll we'll get the the drone airborne and see what we can see from the sky Looking back down the northern cutting. That's Sheffield on the horizon. That's the route the tunnel takes looking south, straight into the sun. I think we'll go and find a different angle to film from. That woodland is the northern cutting again. The tunnel runs from left diagonally across that field. It goes between the two buildings and then it curves to the right and meets up with the southern cutting defined by that strip of woodland just above the second field up. The northern cutting again where we walked up first thing this morning. That bit of orange is my landing pad. I'm over here, back on the northern portal if you can see me. Well, I hope that bit of drone footage sort of give you a better idea the route this tunnel took. Gave you a totally different perspective altogether. Now, if you are interested in exploring abandoned railway tunnels, this is a great one to do as your first tunnel. It's very easy to get into and it's only 500 yards long. So it is a great one as your first tunnel. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video, found it interesting and I hope the drone footage has, has added to it as well. So I'll see you on the next one soon. 
Bye then.